Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to do a special selection today, which is where one of you tell me exactly what I need to check out, and I do it. If you'd like to submit your own special selection, you can find the link in the description. Today's selection comes at us from Bear. It says, hey, you should check out Bear Ghost. Uh, if you remember on Thursday, we checked out the song Beware. Today we're going to be checking out uh, Big Town Banky Blaine's Rockabilly Barbecue, which that is a, a long title, but let's get into it. Got an interesting cover right here. Let's dive in and see what's going on. Okay, so I want to talk about that ending so bad, but I can't do it without talking about what the rest of the song did up to that point, uh, mostly lyrically, but also a little bit musically. Uh, and I really hope I remember <laughs> when I get to the end of this analysis to uh, loop back around to the the outro there. 
because it was gorgeous. That is such a good way to end this. Oh, man. So for those of you who weren't counting time, that song was under four minutes long, and it had more more vocals, more more lyrics in it than songs twice as long. This is an incredibly dense track on all levels, not just lyrically, but also musically. There is a lot going on at any one time, not to mention the fact that the there's this rapid back and forth between uh, all sorts of different ideas. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's just uh, a rapidity that's present throughout the song or if it's just the sheer fact that the song's tempo is fast to begin with and they're dancing between different ideas and that's just the speed that they're flying by at or what. But it is kind of bonkers just how dense of a track this is yet still comes together in something that I would say is wholly entertaining and I don't think too many people would find uh, abrasive or disjointed in as as a whole in its entirety it it really does walk that line between uh having too many layers and being listenable at a like a mainstream level Man, what a task that is to begin with. But then, to combine everything that they did, there's there's horror-esque elements to some of the uh, chord progression uh, concepts and, and the, the melody writing, the notes that are selected for melodies, and that ties into the lyrical themes. Uh, there's this constant back and forth between punk and big band that I don't even know how they fuse together. <laughs> And then there's the entire lyrical concept here that is delivered at five words a, a second, and it is just ridiculously fast to keep up with, not to mention all of the different uh, production elements that come together to help this song really tell its story in a way that makes sense, while also just being completely bonkers and entertaining from start to finish. And part of that is going to be really nice uh, uh, production elements as far as uh, sound effects and the mixing and the EQ and all that. But the other side of it is the musical storytelling that comes about in the way sounds are presented. Like during the chorus, when we have the gang vocal centered, and then we have little one-off uh, statements being said, uh, pan left and right, that are very isolated. I don't remember if the music actually cut back, or if there was just a ton of spacing put between them and the music. But yeah, there's there's a spatial storytelling element, or I should say a spatial awareness in the storytelling that the producer just nails 100 100% and it makes me want to go back and re-listen to Beware and really listen into the production side of this because I don't remember talking about this on Thursday but it has that same sort of uh really fast flowy lyrical vibe with multiple uh perspectives multiple uh, I don't want to say vocalists I think it's all the same vocalists but in the story, it seems that it's it's being it's different people in the story that are all vo voiced by the same vocalist, and I don't remember if there was any uh, production techniques or distancing, spacing, panning, any sort of uh, thing like that that would help differentiate any of these different voices, like what we saw here that aids in the storytelling. Um. So yeah, just I mean the the production right here is just phenomenal. But, okay, so so let's get into some of the stuff that's going on here. I'm, I'm not going to be able to talk about too much about the music specifically because, like I said, this is incredibly dense. Things are moving at a mile, one, a mile a minute. Wow. Actually, yeah, a mile a minute, that's 60 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. That's, that's not ridiculously fast, but that's, that's a good pace. <laughs> the song blows by, though, real quick. And it's really difficult to latch on to anything because by the time you figured out what's going on, you're three sections behind. <laughs> uh, so in order to do a really deep dive into some of the nitty gritty, I would have to listen to this a few times 
and probably script something up be just because there's so much going on and I wouldn't want to miss anything. But from a first time listen, I think what I really want to tie together are some musical themes and some of the production techniques utilized to support and amplify these themes that are present within the music and the lyrics. And also how some of this elevates into social commentary that ties into the ending, which is just mm, icing on the cake there. Fantastic decision to go. Um, so lyrically, what this song is about is it's a it's a Demon Barber of Fleet Street vibe where there is a operation being run that is wholly not about food. <laughs> and it is tied into a restaurant that serves people from the first establishment. Whereas in the Demon Barber of Fleet Street, it was about a, a barber who sent the bodies down to the kitchen below. Here, it is about a, a fight club. Or maybe not a fight club. I don't know. There's definitely fighting involved. And the loser gets to get cooked. And that is pretty much everything here on a, on a very high level area. And first of all, I love the way that the speed of the song ties into this. Now, Beware also had a lot of uh, quickness in the lyrical delivery. And I think part of that is just that these songs are extremely lyrically dense. There is a lot of story that needs to be told, or I should say that the vocalist wants to tell, but they also want to stay in seemingly in that three to five minute area that kind of works for punk and rock tracks. They want to keep their songs on a shorter side, so instead of drawing them out so that the lyrics can easily be heard, they really dig into that punk speed uh, and just go full out with the vocals and and deliver these lyrics at a rapid pace. But at least here, I think it works very well because it kind of presents that energy um, of attending a public fight, like a boxing match or an MMA fight or whatever. And almost that energy of uh, bidding or gambling on the fights like you would see in a Hollywood film of people, you know, in the bleachers or whatever, shouting over, uh, you know, a barrier or like those cage matches that appear in like every, <laughs> uh, every like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is with American films and putting people in a cage in a bar to fight out MMA style, <laughs> like unsanctioned MMA fights in a literal chain link cage. I don't know what is up with that iconography, but it, it appears so often. <laughs> um, but yeah, and having like the spectators around shouting into the fight and like hitting the, the gates or whatever, that's the kind of energy that I feel here. Um, and it's even present uh, presented in some of the stuff. Like I mentioned, a lot of these lyrics uh, are embodying the thoughts, ideas, or voices of several different characters. And there is one moment... When, um, oh, actually it wasn't, it wasn't the, uh, the people, it was actually some sort of announcer for the fight. Um, he says there's broken bones galore. Ooh, this one looks mad. His opponent is reeling. Y'all ain't friends no more. I'm glad we're protected by this glass ceiling. Even in the lyrics, it showcases, um, a protective barrier between the fight and the on watchers the onlookers where they can watch from a safe distance without uh, having to be physically pre present in any of it, whether it's the violence itself, they don't have to worry about being hit, but also any of the secondary elements like blood splattering or whatever like that. So uh, yeah, uh, it's definitely has this energy of being in, an, in uh, a place like this and watching a live fight. And like I said, it's kind of, from what I understand their style Anyways, Beware was very similar, but here I think it just works very well, and maybe it's because it's been a couple of days, but I don't remember Beware being this fast. Uh, maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. 
but this this just seems to be on another level and i think it just works well to present the energy of the atmosphere uh but we also see this uh energy being presented in the music there is a lot of really quick abrupt shifts between different sounds different styles we have sound effects in here like glass shattering which could be like a glass bottle uh, maybe some people in the audience getting into a, a brawl or whatever uh, and yeah that all it all just fits the song itself embodies this energy this atmosphere of being in a live amateur fight scene especially being on the outside looking in now what i think is interesting uh, as well is the chorus and i think that this is going to start bleeding into the social commentary and the outro idea that i want to move into next but the chorus has a constant back and forth between gang vocals these people shouting that are centered in the production um and then these uh, singular voices panned around that uh, have something to add to it but are not part of this group mob mentality kind of thing and I think it's interesting that they present this concept of so many people being complicit and possibly even condoning what is happening here uh, there's there's this idea that it's okay for this violence to happen because it's a sport and because people are enjoying it there's entertainment very much reminds me of the Colosseum uh, you know back in, in uh, early Rome this concept of violence for entertainment and this is where it starts to get a little dark and I'm not sure if this was intentional or not where it starts moving into social commentary or if they really just made a fun song about this hypothetical place but given some of the undertones in the lyrics, I really can't believe that it's just what it is on the surface. And this is where I think the song elevates, at least for me, it moves from just a fun, entertaining thing that I would honestly put on the speakers to do just about anything. It's, a, it's, a, it's fun just to chill and listen to. It's fun to clean to. I mean, it is, it just has that energy that would give me energy to, you know, do whatever I'm doing. It is a fun song, but it also, it moves into this next level of, wow, this is fantastic because of this next element. And it's, it, it almost seems like a throwaway line at one, there's a lot of lyrics, I'm trying to find it. <laughs> Uh, it almost seems like a throwaway line at first until we start looking into some of the stuff that happens near the end. But it mentions something about all of the fighters being working class people. And you can't introduce that concept without it turning into social commentary of the riches pain being entertainment. The poor's pain as being entertainment for the rich. Uh, oh, here it is. It says, uh, slow smoked embraced to perfection, another rack of proletariat ribs. I also like this because it's a callback. It's sort of meta. It understands it's a song. It says that the ribs are terrorized by the fight from the first verse. <laughs> I, I just love that. That is, that is, hmm, that is good. Um... Actually, it, it does go a little bit more into this as uh, perverted for expendable poverty, properly pummeled. So first of all, just really good alliteration, but also another line that explores the fact that all of this is happening to the lower class. And it brings in this idea that, of course, you know, we don't have fight rings where people are, you know, committing violence, one, to survive, and two for entertainment, because of course the loser ends up getting cooked, and we don't have cannibalism. We don't have cannibalism in the modern world. We're just, we're gonna stick there. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep this video on the music. Um. So yeah, obviously this is fictional. You know we don't have any of this, but you know the idea of. 
the people at the bottom being forced to fight with each other for scraps and the right to live rather than joining forces to fight those in power is something that, I mean, man, that hits, right? That is, that is way, this came out December 2020, so, yeah, I mean, relatively new, uh, only a year old, uh, so I, I'd say it's, <laughs> you know, there's, there's definitely messages that uh, exist through time, and I think that's one of them. Uh, these lyrics could easily have been, or this theme could have easily been talked about 10 years ago, 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago in music. So I guess when it came out doesn't really matter, but uh, yeah, it definitely seems to be analyzing at least something that the vocalist sees happening right now. And it, uh, like I said, that, that part right there, taking it from this fun story about this hypothetical uh, fighting ring restaurant combination and turning it into a look at how the wealthy class, the, the one percent even, if we want to push it just like to the top, uh, force the other 99 percent to fight among themselves for scraps rather than for us 99 percent to have the numbers and, and take on the one percent uh, to actually fight for anything worth fighting for rather than you know, pennies is, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, it's very prominent <laughs> right now. I, I think it's very difficult not to see how this would relate to modern times. But I think the interesting part, and I, I'll bring in the, the chorus back into this, is how the people watching, I, I get the idea that even though this is done for the entertainment of the wealthy class and that it's the the poor class that are the ones fighting there's still an element of the poor and middle class in the gang vocals in the chorus when they're excited about the fights when they're talking about how awesome it is what what a time it is to be alive and uh you know talking about chop chop let's rack them up you know let's let's eat this dinner that we just saw <laughs> uh you know fighting you know, we, we know where this meat came from. We're still excited for this meal. Uh, th there's still this, this element that we're fighting among ourselves and we're still happy that we have scraps when someone else doesn't. It's this, I got mine, so get out of here. I don't care about yours kind of feeling. And again, it is something that I feel that I'm seeing a lot. And the song does a fantastic way of taking that concept and incorporating it not just into the lyrics, but into the production, into the music, how the song is presented. And it's just, that brings us to the ending, where we have a group of people that gets louder and faster and more rambunctious, shouting, kill, 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 louder. Faster, accelerando, let's get this. There's an energy, and it's not just the energy of watching a fight and having that adrenaline of viewing somebody uh, and the entertainment of viewing a, a live fight, but also knowing that you're better off than them and knowing that uh, you know their loss is going to be your gain as you get to eat dinner now. It's... Uh, it's it's like I said, this complicity, this condonement of how things are, rather than going about a way of finding finding a way to to change things and to actually go and fight the ones, or attack the ones, or join together to take down the ones that really, uh, you know, they're the ones that we should be fighting. They're the ones that we should be pushing against and trying to get change. And the fact that they can wrap all of this heavy topic up into a fun little song like this that, uh, you know, reminds me again of one of my favorite musicals. <laughs> it's just, man, they took something and put layers upon layers on it, and it is it just ends up as this fantastic uh, social commentary plus illusion, plus it is just entertaining. And to think that they only have 28,000 subscribers on YouTube. I don't know what their Spotify looks like. I've come to the understanding I think Spotify is a better metric for music than YouTube subscriptions, YouTube views. But 
I mean, this song got 170,000 views on YouTube in a year. That is criminal for something as good as this. Um, so yeah, that's that's my analysis. Like I said, it's it's a little weaker on the musical side be, just because it's so dense and it, uh, I would need a few listens to do anything on that, but I, I'm fairly happy with this analysis. So those are my thoughts on Big Town Banksy Blaines' Rockabilly Barbecue by Bear Ghost. It's for you guys. Come in, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you thought of this. If you enjoyed it as much as I did, if there's anything that I missed, anything you agree with me on or disagree with me on, go ahead and hit me up. I'm going to be checking out <laughs> some Bear Ghost albums. I'm super excited about that. Both of these tracks were fantastic. Uh, so yeah. Above the comment section, there's a description box in there as a link for Linktree. It'll take you to this joint right here. You can do all sorts of stuff there, such as join the Patreons, where you can vote on future themes. You can submit a special selection. If you want me to check out a special song, you can get some merch. We got some uh, shirts. We got mugs, all sorts of stuff. Go ahead and check that out. There's a bunch of stuff in there, honestly. Click the link. See what's in there. You can also like, subscribe and ring the bell. Those buttons are above the description box. Greatly appreciate all three of those. I'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC. We'll be looking at another excessive amount of something track, looking at a song that has an excessive amount of something. Uh, if you checked out the uh, Dream Theater one that was just before this reaction, it was an excessive amount of time signatures, and that was kind of bonkers. <laughs> So stay tuned. I think we're going to have a fun week with this one. All right. Until next time, remember to be critical but not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.